Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching. In this video, we're going to continue our DevOps conversation. This is going to be a parallel video to submitting or making a change and uh, that following a process and following the pipeline and creating changes in ServiceNow. What's different in this one is that we're not going to have a work item associated with our change in Azure DevOps. And our change policy is configured to say, hey, if there's no work item, we're not going to auto approve the change. We're going to assign that to the change management group to approve. So let's get started on it. I'm in Azure DevOps. And in the previous video, we went and created a work item. We're purposely not going to do that this time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight to the repo and I'm going to create a branch, right? So those of you the developers, you know, this is a no, no, you're not supposed to do this, but I'm going to go straight in there and I'm going to create a new branch and start working on this. So we'll just give it a name, demo branch with no work item. And uh, we're going to base it on the main one. And look, I'm not going to link this branch to a work item, right? So I'm really doing stuff I shouldn't do. It's not best practice. And that's why we're going to follow a different change policy. So if I open that branch, this is similar to the last one. I'm just going to come in here and make a change to this one. And I'll just say no work item for these changes should not auto approve my change. All right, so I'm going to commit that and I'm not going to associate again any work item with this. I'm just going to go ahead and commit and make sure that's in the system. Now, something I didn't show in my last video is the commits within ServiceNow. So I can get straight to that, um, that particular information within the platform just by going straight to them. So I don't have to go through the change request. I don't have to go through um, the uh, the application itself, I could just go straight to them. And so I'm going to go ahead and search on my name here. And uh, that way I get past all this demo data that's in this particular instance. And I have a commit here that was done just, you know, just now. If I open it up, I'm going to see ServiceNow already sees what I did, right? So I have a branch in here called demo branch with no work item, right? So it already knows it's there. I'm going to come back to Azure DevOps and what we're going to do, same as before, we're going to create a pull request, which that means we're just going to merge this branch back to the main branch, right? So that's when our pipeline gets uh, called. We again are not going to associate a work item with it. So we're going to go ahead and create it. And once it's created, I'm going to complete it using this complete button here at the top. And that will go ahead and start the pipeline running within Azure DevOps. I'm not going to customize the message or anything. And I'm clicking on this complete merge button right down here on the bottom right. And that was what is going to kick off my pipeline. So if I go to pipelines here in uh, Azure DevOps, we can see it's in progress. There's something going on. I've got this one that's in progress now and uh, it's in the build phase. Notice here, again, uh, related items. There are no work items. There are no artifacts related to this particular pipeline run. And um, that build phase has started. So ServiceNow should know about this by at this point. Um, so I'm gonna come back in here and we're gonna go back to our pipeline UI. So I'm gonna open my pipeline within ServiceNow and then navigate over to the pipeline UI. And that's gonna show this build step. It went ahead and completed. So we can see here, yes, it went ahead and completed in Azure DevOps. So they're in sync there. Um, now it is, should start at number 52. So I'm looking at these numbers and the pipeline history right here. So my build was number 51. So I'm looking for a 52. I'm gonna hit the refresh button to get that refreshed. And we should see a 52 when I do that. I do, and I have a test up that did complete. So that um, should correspond again with what we're seeing over in Azure DevOps, and it does. Notice my deploy step though, it's still in progress. It has not turned green. It hasn't, com hasn't been completed yet. So let's take a look at this deploy step in ServiceNow. Just to show you, I'm gonna click on it and show it's still not done. If we view this change, you're gonna see something different than you saw in this other video. Look at this. This change is waiting for approval. It did not auto approve this change. It's not moving forward. The pipeline is stopped. It's gonna stay in this deploy state until forever or we hit a timeout and you can configure a timeout within your, within your pipelines. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down and show you this actually got assigned to a group, change management, and then Caleb and the change manager are in that particular group. So this is not gonna move forward. This is not gonna go until we do that. So just to emphasize that, I'm gonna click off and click on and refresh it. I'm gonna view that change. We're gonna see it's still pending approval. I'm gonna show you that pipeline is still in deploy, so it hasn't moved forward. Now, let's go ahead and approve it. We're gonna say, hey, we looked at this, we're fine. Right click and I'm gonna approve. And now 
it will go ahead and proceed. And if we were to sit here and watch the notes, actually it went really fast, you can see once it went the, once it got approved, it automatically went from scheduled um, to, no went from authorized to scheduled, and then from scheduled to implement. So now the DevOps flow is picking back up and running with that. We should see at this point, the pipeline has probably realized that the change got approved and it did. So we see here that it, uh, it turned green. So we're good on this side. If we go back to service now, we should see that um, after this implement step, it'll go to a review step. It just did right there live while I was talking. So we are in the review step. If I go ahead and close this change request and just click off and click on, we should see that this turned green on this deploy step and we actually have a stopped date and time for that particular deployment. So the big differentiator between this video and the last video is we did not associate a work item with the chain, with the commit we made in Azure DevOps. And because of the change policy we have configured, it did not auto approve the change. It assigned it to a group, someone to review manually before um, that pipeline completed. So as I said in my original video, when I introduced DevOps in, uh, introduction, you can accelerate the change process and you can slow down the change process. There's good reasons to do both and hopefully this video and the previous one um, helped illustrate how you can do that with ServiceNow. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in DevOps. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.